Today on Hands On Photography, we're gonna look at that new hotness, the iPhone 14 and its camera capabilities. You know what? You're getting 48 megapixels on these cameras. Woo, that sounds good, right? Now stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. What is happening, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hey, I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. I love to sit down with you fine folks each and every Thursday to share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And from time to time, I actually like to sit down and go through some of your feedback. Yes, you send in emails and social media posts and all that good stuff. Uh, just sharing your feedback, sharing your images. And uh, this week, that's what we're going to get into. A bit of feedback that I got from one of our loyal listeners. And I thought that, uh, yeah, let's share that because it may be beneficial for everybody else here in the hands-on photography community. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. So allow me to switch my screen here and take a look at this bit of feedback. All right. This comes from John. It says, hi, John here, a club twit slash discord member. Woo. First off, hey, hold up, Mr. John. Look here. Let me say thank you to you for being a club twit member. Appreciate that support. Really do. Okay, back to the email. <laughs> this is, I'm currently in New Orleans. I was able to get my new iPhone 14 Pro Max. Oh, bragging, huh? Good for you. Nice. I uh, got his iPhone 14 Pro Max last Friday on day one by going to my local Apple store. I just wanted to show three pics of the Mississippi River. One is at raw 48 megapixels. One is at raw 12 megapixels. And the other is a panoramic shot. Zoom all the way in on all three shots. OK, and the message continues. No, when you zoom in all the way, none of the three shots are going to be rock solid clear. OK. Fair enough. But consider how far you are zooming in and consider what you can see. Fair enough. That's the real amazing thing, especially zoom to the left side of the panel shot and look for the American flag. You may show and use my pics. These have not been touched up. Also, in the two normal pics, zoom in on the name on the boat on the other side of the river. I think either way, just a little further away, you'll see how much better the 48 megapixel sensor and lens is. And look at the exif data. I know what lens I'm shooting with. Sign John Gerard. All right. So, hmm, iPhone 14. Boy, that's the new hotness here in the smartphone market. And by golly, yeah, they have earned it. Apple tends to do an amazing job with this iPhone hardware. Uh, I am clearly on record with stating, you know what? I do not like iOS. Never have. I don't know if I ever will. Um, I haven't tried out this latest version of iOS. I believe it's iOS 16 right now as at the time of recording this. Uh, we'll see. Maybe one day I'll get to try it out. But previous iterations of iOS have not been my jam. But from a hardware perspective, I've always really enjoyed and just dig the the Apple hardware. I love um, I love the, the iPhones. I love the MacBooks and just they're good. They're rock solid and really just premium devices. I get that. But um, I could never really get it together with the software working up with the hardware. But anyway, so, yeah, the new iPhone 14 is boasting, as usual, a much improved camera on the smartphones because, hey, that's why people buy phones now. They never really buy phones to use them as a telephone. They buy them for messaging and they buy them for the cameras. That's that's the thing. The, the problem, quote, problem that I have with the iPhone, 
As a matter of fact, with not only the iPhone and even my Pixel 6 Pro, is the marketing behind how these cameras are um, presented to the masses. Uh, Apple has said this is a 48 megapixel camera. Let me say that again with quotes, 48 megapixel camera. Um, and yeah, I guess it is in theory, but it's, there's a lot going on when it comes to the smartphone cameras versus the cameras that you'll use, the, uh, such as the DSLR that's back behind me, that's on a APS-C sensor or a full frame sensor or a heck, even a medium format. Everything is gonna be different when it comes to the math to figure out those megapixels. So let's take a, 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 a quick look at, let's just this site here called uh, GSM Arena, um, because I wanted to break down what's called the Bayer filter, which is a filter on top of the image sensor that's going to break down the, the whole aspect of RGB, the colors that we're going to see uh, for our photographs. Because if that sensor wasn't there, we would end up with just black and white images. So what's going on with the Bayer sensor, Bayer filter on these sensors is, is a bit different in these newer smartphones, in particular, the iPhone 14, the Pixel 6 Pro, even the, the latest Samsungs, all of these camera phones that are offering these higher resolution, quote, higher resolution megapixel cameras, they don't have a bear filter on them. They have what's called a quad bear filter. So what's the difference on that? I'm going to try to keep this brief and not too technical, but when you're looking at a Bayer filter, you have the RGB um, pixels there and you get two pixels for green because our eyes are going to see green or are more sensitive to green. And you're going to get one pixel for red and one pixel for blue. So that's a total of four pixels. Okay. Now on a quad Bayer sensor, you're going to get, instead of one pixel for red, you're going to get four. Instead of one for blue, you're going to get four. Instead of one for green or for two for green, you're going to get eight. So it's, it's quadrupling it, making it more, giving you a, a little bit more photo sites uh, to work with when it comes to capturing your images. The problem, okay, so let's look at this picture. The problem is these actual sensors and the pixel sizes of these. Smartphone cameras have a typically a half inch sensor and that's being very, very generous is usually a little bit smaller than that. That's not very big. So the pixels on side of that, on the inside of that, that sensor, they're going to be really daggum small. Okay. So just think how much light can you really capture on a half inch of, of surface space? It's not, not a lot. So you're going to see, the manufacturers trying to do whatever they can to boost up the pixel density on these images to, to try to capture more for those low light scenarios. Hence why we have the quad bear and the pixel binning. So you're in, in theory, you're taking essentially a 12 megapixel sensor because that's pretty much about all you're going to get out of a half half inch sensor and turning it into a 48 because of the quad bear layer. And all of that sounds fine and dandy from a marketing standpoint, because everybody says, Ooh, I got a 12 megapixel camera versus a 48 megapixel camera. Give me that 48 megapixel camera because it's bigger and better. It's not always the case. Okay. Um, so again, this is, I, I hate the promotion behind it because it's, it's not necessarily giving people the truth. Uh, you're essentially getting a 12 megapixel camera on these smartphones. That's what you're getting. I don't care what phone it is. That's pretty much what you're getting because of the, the sensor size on these things. They're not the same as an A7S um, Mark III, which is a video camera, but it's not the, they don't even have the biggest um, megapixel count from a still standpoint. And it's definitely not a Sony A1 or a Canon R5 that's going to give you 40, 50 megapixel images on a full frame sensor. Okay. Because the micron or pixel size, the microns of micron size of each pixel on these smartphones are ranging anywhere between 0.8 micron up to about 1.6, depending on the pixel bending, you know, after everything is put together as four. Compare that to a regular camera, you're going to get a um, pixel pitch of 
roughly three microns, sometimes uh, almost five, depending on the camera. So a lot more light coming into the photo sites. Okay. All right. I'm done with that. I'll leave a link in the show notes that's further explaining the Bayer filter and, and uh, the quad Bayer filter that's being used on these smartphones today. But I just wanted to get that out of the way because I think people are just being sold <laughs> when they see those numbers from Google and Apple and Samsung. Um, but yeah, we have come a long way. So let's pull up his images here. I'm going to switch my screen. Got his images here. And actually I have a couple images of mine. So these are my images from the Pixel 6 Pro. Yeah, I love this phone. It's, it's, it's mighty fine hardware. And this is the standard 1X zoom. This is 2X, this is 4X, and this is, I believe this was 10X. And granted, I know what I'm doing with a, with a camera. You know, I know how to lock focus and, and lock in exposure, but you notice what's happening here is this isn't necessarily giving me all of those juicy megapixels that the camera allegedly has. Okay. Notice how much softer this image has gotten. Uh, the details are sort of hit or miss on it. And the computational photography will eventually kick in to make it look a little bit better, but these are raw files. So this is what I'm getting straight out of the camera unprocessed. And as you get these super duper zooms, that, you know, Apple or Samsung or Google is trying to push off. It's not going to do as well at that really, really high zoom. But if you go back at say the uh, 2X or the 4X, it is taking that data from that quote 48 megapixel sensor and basically giving you a cropped view from the sensor and not necessarily uh, doing a digital zoom. This is creating more of a, a, you know, optical zoom because it's cropped down on the sensor and not doing any type of computation. So it is going to look a little bit sharper at those particular um, focal lengths. And I just wanted to show that because both Apple and, <laughs> and Google are doing the same daggum thing. So let's get to his images. This is the pan panoramic image that uh, Mr. Mr. Gerard was sharing with me to use this reference. And then we have these other ones here. Okay. So we got, image right here. Let me pull up the develop module here so we can see more of the information. All right. So this is image one and then this one is image two. So again, he said one was the 12 megapixel and one was the 48 megapixel. And if you look at the two, notice this one image two seems like it's cropped in a little bit more. And he didn't specify which file was which, but I'm going to guess this is the 48 megapixel um, because of how it's, it's giving me that cropped in view of the same shot versus the original one here. OK, and then plus you can look at the the uh, resolution up here in the upper left is telling me one's a smaller one versus the other one. Not by much, but it is smaller. And as I zoom in on this, yeah, this detail ain't bad. Just as you said, this, this detail is not bad. It ain't great, <laughs> but it's not bad. Could this image be printed and, and put up on a wall somewhere? Yeah, it could. But so, so could this one. This could be printed and put it up, put up on a wall somewhere. Now, if you want to pixel peep, I don't recommend that because it's not going to look all that great. But up on a wall at a normal viewing distance, that's going to look totally fine. Now this one, I, I, I played around with it because Lightroom has what they call an enhance AI algorithm in their software that basically will allow you to take your images and scale them up to a super resolution. And this one did, this one scaled it up to a quote, 48 megapixel image here. And yeah, it ain't that great. <laughs> I'd zoom in on it. I'd zoom in on this image and it doesn't look Oh, that great. It definitely gave me more resolution, but essentially what it did was took bad data and just really made it worse. You know, so what's that old saying? Garbage in, garbage out. No, I'm not saying your image is garbage, but what I'm saying is this is just, you can only expect so much from a half inch sensor on cameras. You, you, you can't, I mean, it is what it is. I don't care how much 
Tim Cook and the, the folks at Apple tried to tell you that this thing is just the most wonderful and most greatest. You can only get so much out of a half inch sensor. It's just physics. That's all it is. Um, again, there's some other things involved. Check out that link in the show notes. I'm just walking you through the, the uh, information regarding the Bayer sensor because it's a lot of stuff. And then you have the fraction and it, it's, it's so much more. But in conclusion, is the iPhone camera pretty daggum good and badass? Yes, it is. Most people are going to be able to pick up that camera and just snap some pretty cool images that are going to be so great. They can, you can print them out and hang them up somewhere and just marvel at them every day. They're going to be really, really good. Uh, but my advice to everyone, and that's not just for the iPhone 14, that's for next year's phone, that's for the phone after that and so forth. Please do not buy into the megapixel count on these phones. Just, just stop doing that. Uh, look at it. Take, take those little stats with a grain of salt um, and just say, you know what? I can get pretty good images out of it, but I'm not going to get a 48 megapixel that can compare to the 48 megapixels of a crop sensor DSLR or a crop sensor mirrorless camera. It's just not going to happen. Even in micro four thirds, all of those sensors are much bigger than the sensors in a phone camera. Okay. So it's going to be much more light. You're going to be able to capture photo sites are going to be larger in size. A lot of factors. It's just going to be different in, in most cases better. Okay. All right. I'm done ranting for this week's episode. I appreciate you all sending over to continue support, email, feedback, all that good stuff. It really does mean a lot. Hey, and, and, Again, just just keep tagging me on the social medias. Uh, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. So over on Twitter, I am Ant underscore Pruitt. Over on Instagram, I am Ant underscore Pruitt. You can follow me on all of those platforms. Again, I still don't quite know if Instagram is doing right by my follower count, but follow me if you feel like it. Else, just tag me and share your images with me. I love checking them out. It's been fun seeing what people are shooting and and sharing with me because some of y'all are pretty daggum good at this photography stuff. And I love it. I daggum love it. And uh, also if you have questions, comments, feedback, email the show hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I answer pretty much all of them and I answer them as soon as I can. And again, folks, please take the time to share the show with other folks. I, I really do appreciate it. So after you've subscribed to the show, share the show, the show out with other folks that may be interested. You can find all of the information about hands-on photography on the website. Go to twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P. And you'll see that we're available on Apple Podcasts. We have a YouTube channel. We have a Spotify feed. All the different podcast uh, applications that are available. So just check it out there on the website and tell somebody else about the show. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week, even though I rumble and stub stutter and just can't get quite get my words out. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Victor. I'm sorry for making it difficult on you, my man. All right, everybody. Hey, safely create and dominate. And I will see you all next time. Take care. The world is changing rapidly, so rapidly, in fact, that it's hard to keep up. That's why Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, talk with the people making and breaking the tech news on Tech News Weekly every Thursday. They know these stories better than anyone. So why not get them to talk about it in their own words? Subscribe to Tech News Weekly and you won't miss a beat every Thursday at twit.tv.